Welcome to Future Proof Skydiving with Pete Allen. Uh, my mission is to see if we can drag our sport kicking and screaming into the future with a more sustainable uh, look to it. Uh, right now, there's a good chance either through regulation or public pressure that our sport is going to be closed down. So I've made it my objective to, to search for technologies and people that are pushing uh, us towards a more sustainable future. And with that, I've been interviewing various companies. I've spoken to Zero Avia, Ampere. I actually spoke to Rory Gonzalski when he was back at Magni X a couple of years ago. He was one of my first interviews. Um, and yeah, the, the pieces of the puzzle right now are, are there on the ground. Like we can run a sustainable operation for skydiving using solar, uh, wind, biogas, uh, but the aircraft has been the missing piece. And so that's why when I saw what Dovetail are doing, I was pretty excited to get in touch. And David, thank you very much for taking the time uh, to, to talk to me about this. Sure. Have you done any uh, skydiving yourself, David? Uh, yes, once. Well, you know, I I don't know if you call that the skydiving. I I you know jumped from an aircraft with a parachute, right? Uh, so it wasn't it wasn't really you know uh, free fall, right? Um, because yeah. yeah, we were basically linked to uh, to the aircraft, but um, uh -huh. yeah, it was just jumping and you know you know basically falling with the, the parachute. I mean, it was it was interesting, interesting experience. Well, maybe uh, maybe you get to jump from one of your own aircraft with an electric yeah. motor. Yeah, 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 well, definitely. I mean, def I'll have to try it, you know, as a passenger, as a jumper or whatever. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that yeah. will happen for sure. Um, just maybe just give you, I'm sure you understand what a skydiving operation requires, but also just for the listeners, uh, our mission profile currently on a PT6208 is 14 passengers up to 13 and a half thousand feet with a 28 minute turnaround approximately. Um, and so I'm kind of interested to see if you think that Dovetail is offering something that could be practical and affordable for skydiving operations all over the world. And if you don't mind, David, if you wouldn't mind giving an introduction to yourself and what Dovetail do. Yeah, sure. So uh, my name is David Rall. Um, I'm the CEO and, and founder of Dovetail Electric Aviation. Uh, I'm an aerospace engineer by background. Um, and uh, since a few years from now, yes, dedicated to the mission of uh, electrifying um, aviation and uh, turning it into a uh, zero emissions um our purpose or basically our approach to uh, to uh, the electrification of uh, aviation is uh, based initially on the retrofit on the conversion of existing aircraft into electric we think that uh, there is definitely room for developing new aircraft and we will also like to do that in the future but uh, we also uh, believe that there is a uh, you know, big need to um, go as quickly as possible and to have an impact in in you know short term. I mean, you know, two three years, not not a decade, uh, as uh, that probably would be the the time frame to develop a, a new aircraft. And we also think that there's a business case around the electrification of a small passenger aircraft. Uh, we know of the limitations of um, electric aviation right now. Uh, we know that uh, the the weakest link here is the energy storage and that uh, that is basically the reason why we don't see electric aircraft flying out there well there's one you know a, a mm -hmm. small one that is a trainer just only for two people but uh, no no commercial uh, version of that yet in terms of carrying people uh in schedule flights mm -hmm. or something similar uh, and uh, yeah what that means is that um yeah the applicability of the technology is going to be reduced for a little while right um and that's why we're focusing initially on very short flights, uh, the kind of flights that you can see on, on scenic flights, for instance, scenic tours, and also skydiving. Um, and, and that's why we think skydiving is, is a perfect use case, introductory case, uh, to bring the, the technology into the market. Well, that's certainly good news for us. Um, so where does that put us on the affordable scale of things? I mean, um, we're talking about retrofitting a 208. Now, obviously, there's a lot of people out there where, where a lot of people are using 208s within the skydiving community. And when that um, power plant comes up for replacement, um, do you think it's it's going to be affordable for a skydiving operation to, to come and speak to you? We believe so, uh, and obviously yeah, the, the point is to take advantage of that that event, right? That uh, yeah, once mm -hmm. that you need to overhaul your your PT six. Uh, what we're suggesting is rather than doing that, um, go for an electric conversion, right? Um, 
that way yeah. we can reduce the delta i mean there's going to be definitely uh, uh, an increase in cost. I mean, it's going to be more expensive to go electric than um, overhauling your PT6, but uh, it's not going to be 10 times, right? Um, and uh, mm -hmm. because of that, because you you need to incur into that cost no matter what, um, yeah, you know, but you can go instead for, for electrification and, and the use case will think uh, stacks up. We've, we've done some analysis with, uh, uh, you know, our first uh, customer. And uh, uh, yeah, the numbers suggest that you can amortize the the delta. I mean, the increased cost uh, mm -hmm. in less than three years. In less than three years. And, and what about um, load capacity? Yeah. So uh, that is obviously is going to be one of the restrictions here, right? Um, so mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely you won't be able to carry as as many people as the conventional aircraft, right? Um, so, uh, mm -hmm. but we're we're hearing numbers like that, like you know, typical uh, skydiving mission. It would be like 13, 14, 15 uh, jumpers. So um, initially, we may start with eight, uh, yep. and as as the technology gets better, and when they say the technology gets better, as we introduce uh, improved versions of the battery system, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we'll be increasing those numbers, right? Um, and uh, yeah, you know, at some point we may be really close to to the conventional aircraft, but yeah, it will be gradual, right? Um, um, but you don't need to do for for a future uh, adopter for a future operator uh, flying electric aircraft. You don't need to do anything extra because the idea is that as you need to replace the battery pack uh, every number of cycles, uh, we'll be bringing to market improved versions of that uh, battery system, and that will allow the operator to to fly longer or to carry more people. So, uh, uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, in in I mean, I would say that almost from the outset, uh, from an economic point of view, it will be more efficient, you may be carrying initially less people, but at a much lower cost. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the first version will be a small uh, improvement in, in costs, but uh, yeah, with future versions, uh, what we're uh, forecasting is that you could reach 30, 35, 40% lower operating costs. Yeah. And if someone was to get on board with you and go for the retrofit with you, the uh, kind of the extension of it, the, the changing, the upgrading of the batteries, would that be part of the uh, relationship with Dovetail? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, that's where we're offering our conversion to um, uh, interested customers right now. It is true mm -hmm. that we don't have a product in the market yet. We, we hope to have it. We plan to have it in two years. Uh, but right. we we want to fly as as soon as next year. Uh, those will be experimental flights, and mm -hmm. we want to get certified in by twenty twenty six. But uh, yeah, if there's anybody interested, yeah, definitely you know get in contact with us because okay. yeah, we would like to to work with them. And then the certification, obviously, that's a it's a big uh, barrier or an obstacle to be climbed over. And are you thinking it's going to be STC? Or this is an STC. I mean, it's uh, you know mm -hmm. the, the most efficient path to certification. And the reason why we can do this much faster than if we develop an aircraft from scratch is uh, through a supplemental type certificate. Perfect. Uh, and does that look like it's going to be the same for EASA, CAA, the FAA? There may be variations, right? And, and uh, because we are uh, an Australian slash Spanish company, we're working with CASA, the Australian regulator, and uh, we're planning also to certify with EASA in Europe. So you're using, I believe, the, the Magni X650 power plant. Is that correct? That's, the, that's your current plan. So um, that is our current plan, but uh, we have a couple of options, right? Uh, and okay. uh, yeah, what we want to do is to, um, yeah, not to limit ourselves to one specific uh, engine or motor developer. And definitely uh, Magni X is one of those options that uh, yeah, we're, we're uh, proposing and that we're offering. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we have uh, alternatives so that, uh, because in the end we, we work as, you know, at a small scale, like an OEM, like um, uh, Airbus or, or Boeing, where mm -hmm. when they develop a new aircraft, sometimes, well, typically they offer uh, at least a couple of power plant options, right? Uh, so that's, that's mm -hmm. uh, our approach to make sure that, uh, yeah, we can make this happen. And obviously, looking at, at the most uh, relevant and and the 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 most likely options in in the market, but uh, yeah, we don't need to limit ourselves to to one necessarily. Oh, that's really good to hear, especially because electric aviation is such a new field, and there's so much development and hopefully funding going into it as well, because people are excited yeah. about what they can get from the future. Um, so just recharge time. Current, I, do you have a current idea on the um, the range and the recharge time? 
Yes, so um, in terms of um, uh, recharge time, what we are proposing is to recharge in 150% times the, your flight time. So in other words, if you fly 20 mm -hmm. minutes, you may need to recharge for 30 minutes. Uh, in terms of range, yeah, you know, if, uh, we're saying we, we come up with this, this number of um, uh, 100 kilometers, but for uh, skydiving, skydiving operations, probably is more relevant the, the flight time. Time, uh, exactly. And what we're saying is that uh, yeah, the first version yeah, should be capable of flying 20, 25 minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, as we move forward, um, yeah, that, that uh, range or that flight time will be extended. Yeah, and maybe that's where we can help you out. You're talking about showcase, and I think that's what skydiving could, uh, could help with a company like yourself or Amber or a similar thing is that we have such a... Um, uh, a short mission profile. It's a good way to test out what's going on. Um, oh, uh, just talking about the, the mission profiles, what about the charging infrastructure? Is that something that you would get involved with or is that something you would leave for the operator? Well, we, we will provide that solution to the operator. It's not that we're developing mm -hmm. uh, chargers in house, but uh, understanding yep. that, yeah, you know, you just cannot mm -hmm. simply, you know, drop an electric aircraft at the, you know, the base of the operator and say, well, you know, you go and, and figure out how to charge it, right? Uh, we need to provide that part of the, the solution. Right. So, and we're in discussions with um, um, charger companies to, um, yeah, again, to, to nice. make it part of, of our offering. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah. In summary, yeah, that's that's something that uh, yeah we will we'll be able to provide. Um, yeah, there will be a I guess a system that needs to be installed at the base, uh, and obviously is is the key aspect of all of this. Okay, great. Uh, I do know there's a couple of skydiving operators out there already that look like they may be willing to take a slight reduction in the economics um, in order to get operating sooner rather than later. Um, so, is there anything else that you have to say for them? You know, to to encourage them. Yeah, so, um, well, more or less along the lines of what we've discussed and what you've uh, mentioned already, Pete, mm -hmm. we believe that, uh, yeah, skydiving is going to be an activity that, uh, yeah, you know, maybe unfortunately, but uh, will be under the scrutiny in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, you know, in the future, you may need, in order to, to get that license to operate, you may need to demonstrate that uh, yeah, you're really sustainable. And the thing is, we're bringing to, uh, to the market the solution that uh, the, makes the, the skydiving aircraft really, you know, zero emissions. So from my point of view, what I would suggest is that uh, whoever is thinking about uh, moving to this business or preparing for what is going to come, yeah, I would suggest that uh, they talk to us, right? Uh, doesn't mm -hmm. mean that uh, yeah, you need to buy an electric aircraft tomorrow. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, what I would suggest is that uh, start looking at uh, how this could work for um, for your operations and, uh, yeah, you know, the things, the steps that need to be taken. Also, the benefits and the advantages that uh, you're going to get and, and the, the differentiating aspect that uh, uh, the first operators will get. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, talk to us. Uh, we are speaking already with uh, um, a number of uh, skydiving operators um, in Australia, okay. in the U.S., even in Europe. And um, yeah, there's there's more and more interest, right? Um, and I would say that uh, the more companies, the more um, uh, potential adopters um, yeah, get 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 into this, the easier and the more affordable it's going to be. Great. Uh, that that seems like a good way to wrap it up, there, David. Thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate your positivity towards this. I'm looking forward to seeing skydiving quiet and uh, fuel efficient and sustainable in the future. Yeah, I would love that. Would love that. Just for you to know, um, yeah, you know, uh, our next prototype in this case includes also hydrogen, but our uh, next prototype mm -hmm. will run it in Spain by the end of June. So, wow. um, okay, this is it's a, it's a ground system, so it's, it's a, you know yeah. everything is running on 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 the ground on a rig, right? Uh, but we're gonna mm -hmm. be testing the the motor, the propeller, the batteries, the hydrogen fuel cell. Um, that probably will take uh, longer to get to market, but uh, yeah, we're also working on on uh, that side. Uh, electrification yeah. is going to change uh, the industry in some some uh, segments or some applications sooner um, than others. Definitely, I think skydiving mm -hmm. is one of those, and uh, yeah, we want to make that possible as as quickly as possible. So after my meeting with David, I realized I'd missed out on a couple of questions. Um, I wanted to ask him. Uh, about the upgrade and service options that would be available for a purchaser. And he says, and I quote, as better cells are bought into the market, we will offer battery packs with them. We're developing our battery system with standard cells that cell developers are planning to improve with enhanced options. 
Uh, in this case, each battery upgrade will be a natural thing to do without extra investment from the operator. Uh, we are considering a pay by the hour or pay per flight for battery systems if it is attractive to operators, reducing the capital investment. We will also offer in the future a hydrogen version of the power plant, but that will come later. And then the other question I had was the possible cassette style or quick change of battery packs that might work well for us as skydivers. Uh, and he says, we have looked into that, but so far operators seem to be happy with a fixed version that is only removed when replaced with a new system. We did some work about a swappable battery and although the first version will be a fixed version, we may revisit that option based on customer interest. Now I'm pretty sure that we would be interested in that just looking at the recharge times. So thanks David for those uh, extra answers.